Okay, so now we will discuss about dynamic loading, linking, and shared library. So let's actually draw the same diagram. So there is a CPU over here, and there is a RAM. And there's a hard disk. So let's say I write my program P1 and I bring my P1 inside the RAM. So now the problem is that uh, the hard disk is actually cheaper memory, but it's not that fast. RAM is actually a much faster memory, and uh, uh, that is the reason why CPU wants to read from the RAM. Now my problem is that it is expensive. So when it is expensive, I cannot have total like uh, a lot of this RAM available for my CPU. So let's say if I write my program and my program actually becomes really, really big. And what happens is like I bring in my program P1 in here. So my P1 is, is inside my RAM. Let's say I want to execute my program P2 too. So now P, P2 is also a, a really huge program there might not be enough space available for program P2 to actually go inside the RAM. And uh, since P1 actually does uh, does uh, a lot of interrupt and IO and all this other stuff, CPU might not be uh, available. Uh, so P1 might not be using CPU all the time. So in that case, we need to run P P2 too, but there's a problem since P2 cannot actually fit inside the RAM, there's a problem over there. So what happens is, um, in P1, what we can do is, we cannot bring the entire part of P1. We can just load few of the subroutines and few of the code, and then wait for the CPU to actually execute them. Once the CPU starts executing them, then what happens is it'll say that, oh, I want a subroutine or I want a function which is not there inside the RAM, and it'll wait for it. So CPU will put, put program P1 into, into a wait mode, and then, in the meanwhile, the operating system will actually fetch that subroutine inside it. That is called dynamic loading, that whenever you need a subroutine, that is when it is loaded. So that is called a dynamic loading. What is uh, dynamic linking? So let's say if, if we actually write a program, right? Let's actually talk about, about um, instead of a dynamic, uh, we'll write about uh, static linking. We'll, we'll talk about static linking. So let's say I'm writing my program, and um, I don't write my code in which I want to write modular program. So I will create some libraries, let's say a math library or something like that. So whenever I'm writing my program, I want to execute some part of a math library, I will include that library inside my code. That is called static linking, that I link a particular part of my code to a library which is already existing, that is called static linking. Another part what happens is, when I write my code at that time, I will say that I want to execute a certain part of library and I will put a stub inside it. So that is called, uh, I'll put a stub inside it and what happens is I start writing my code and I'll say that there is a library which should be inside the RAM somewhere. I don't know where it will be. Whenever I come to this part of my code, go and search for that particular library and then execute that part of code. And then I'll continue and then let's say there's another stub. So I can have multiple libraries linked this way. So what will happen is my program P1 will be loaded over here inside my RAM, and then I will come over here and I, I figure out that there is a stub over here. At this point, CPU will try to figure out, is this library somewhere existing inside my RAM? If it is, then it will basically start jump at that location and start executing that code. If it is not there, the operating system will bring that dynamic link library inside the RAM and then it will execute over here. The next time when, when program, so the next time let's say it runs over here and there's another stub over here. Next time when it comes, it will directly jump to that location and start executing from there. So that is called dynamic linking or dynamic link libraries, okay? So uh, dynamic link libraries is useful because like there is a certain amount of code and let's say this amount of code is shared by P1 and it is shared by P22. So we don't need to replicate all of this code over and over again at the same time. Like P1 can, can have a link to it, P2 can also have a link to it. And what can happen is that there can be multiple versions of it because let's say I wrote, wrote a certain part of my library and there are some bug fixes. So I can actually just go there and 
replicate uh, and replace this part of code and then that part will basically be used by other programs. Uh, the, the new part of the code or the bug fixed will be actually executed by P1 and P2. There can be multiple versions of it also. So let's say P1 executes a certain version, let's say V1 and P2 executes V2. So P1 and P2 can actually link to different parts of a same, same library. That way we can have multiple versions of it. So this is called uh, dynamic linking and we discuss about dynamic loading and shared libraries or static libraries.